Okay. We're going to cover just chapter 11 today. I'm not going to go into 12. I think 11 will take us long enough. So we'll go that route. Um, pretty low number of participants here today compared to a lot of days. Maybe a few will filter in, but if I don't see a upturn in that, then we'll have to figure out some kind of way to get more people here. Thank you guys for turning on your cameras. I appreciate that. Like I say, I think it's a good thing to throw them on. Number one, it gives me, I can kind of scroll across and check on you guys. It's nice to actually be talking to people instead of just sitting here in front of a computer talking to myself. Number two, it'll halfway make you feel like you got to pay attention. So um, I think it's better for everybody that way. So thank you guys. Um, let me start. I'm going to share my screen to something different first here. Uh, I think this is going to be the right thing. Yes, I just wanted to remind you guys, for the ones of you who are um, type that want to think, you know, start getting ahead of things, um, take note that you've got a lesson plan that's due. It is a, uh, it's a hundred points, so it can help your grade a lot. And it's pretty well defined what I'm looking for here. There are, um, gosh, at least 20 different options on here to write about. And if you have one that's not on this list that applies, then I don't have an issue if you write on something different. You may want to um, email me and make sure that it's a good topic if it's not one of these that's listed. But it's got everything written below down here. Information finding is 70 of the 100 points, and it just has given me a lot of the information about your specific disability that you're going to talk about. Um, uh, the cause of it, how prevalent is it, what other health conditions come along with it, things like that. Um, okay. Which demographics are more likely to have this disability? Um, are males more likely to get it? Is white more white people more more commonly seem to have this? Um, different things that we talk about have different demographics. What's the prognosis? what sort of adaptations might they need, and how can they be assessed to see how their function is, is used. And you'll have to do a little bit of research on this, but it's a 100-point uh, assignment, so you should have to do a little research. And then there's a lesson plan, which is gonna be 30 points, and you're gonna design an activity that's appropriate to the conditions that the client would have with that particular disability, um, tell how that activity is intentionally used to achieve objectives, what, what you're trying to improve, like physical functioning, mental functioning, family relationships, awareness, social inclusion, things like that, and then describe the activity in detail, what, when, where, who, how, and if there's going to be any accommodations or adaptations that need to be given, then list those as well. So that's just something to think about. Um, that's not due until November 14th. We also on the 7th is the reflection paper, which is the kind of the second part of the leisure experience paper, which you should have done already. Um, the reflection paper is just a follow up. You're gonna tell us, uh, again, you're gonna cover what you chose to do. Tell me whether you thought you were successful, um, whether you stuck with it, be honest, what barriers you faced, what benefits you saw. And it's just one to two pages. There shouldn't be any research or anything necessary for this one. This is a freebie, basically. So tell me how it went. And that's due on November 7th. So that's just a couple reminders for you guys from the syllabus. Y'all have any questions on that, anybody? Those are pretty straightforward. And they're both under just the content area on Blackboard when you go to look, if you want to look at them.
All right. So I'm just going to jump on in to chapter 11 and we'll get started on that. Um, chapter 11, like it says here, it is talking about youth development and therapeutic recreation. We've talked about a lot of different groups and all so far. So today we're going to talk about youth and how they can be helped with recreation therapy. These learning outcomes are a good um, kind of study guide to just kind of check, check off the boxes as you're looking through the PowerPoints prior to a test or something to see if you're able to do these things. This is kind of what you want from each chapter. I'm not going to go through each one of those. Um, as far as youth development in TR, what we're starting to see is an increasing problem of youth that are considered to be at risk. Um, and what that means, at-risk youth have obstacles to healthy physical and psychosocial development, which is mental and physical. You know, they've got obstacles in their way because of their um, current situation. Um, and things that are <coughs> some of these problems and obstacles are things like risky sexual behavior, gangs, poverty crime, drugs, uh, social isolation, bullying, um, physical violence, you know, maybe a parent, sibling, the access to poor health care or poor access to health care, inactivity, very common. Why? Because they love to play video games now, including my own kids. I can barely make my four-year-old go outside unless I snatch his tablet away from him. So it's something that I see how this happens. Um, obesity, big, big, big deal with kids these days. And depression. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the commercial even with the, there's this little kid and his grandmother's in the house with him she's apparently keeping him and he's like calls his grandmother from his room where he's like playing a game and asks her she picks up the phone and says hey grandma can i have another grape soda and wants her to bring him a drink from the kitchen you know rather than him getting his lazy tail up and walking in there so that that one is that commercial is all about how youth these days are that's that's common. Um, my seven-year-old last night, he was in his room, getting close to bedtime. He starts yelling, "Dada, Dada!" And I thought something was wrong. I go back there to the room. I'm like, "Hey, what's up?" He said, "Hey, will you turn the light off?" I was like, "Come on now." So I'm gonna be fighting this myself if I don't watch it. So of course, what I did is I I said you can get down out of that bed and turn the light off yourself. Thank you. And I turned around and went back where I was. So, um, and he did get down and turn on the turn, turn, turned his own light off. Um, so something that we're looking at with that affected youth development is this, uh, individuals with disabilities education act. And I think we've covered this already. IDEA, um, and what it is about, we're just, it just provides adequate support and services that help young people that have some of these challenges that we talked about to achieve their fullest potential. You know, they're getting appropriate, free public education. And, and that's one of the main things that we're seeing from IDEA, not necessarily recreation therapy based in nature, but it is for their betterment. Um, Transition services, what they're for, they are there to provide transition into adulthood with recreation being part of the plan. So we're talking about giving them education on what sort of recreation is available to them, teaching them skills of how to, you know, participate in certain recreation, things like that. And then obviously through this IDEA, recreation is is also included in what they are provided. So for a child to be what we're calling at risk, um, 
as it says, it denotes a set of presumed cause and effect dynamics that place an individual child or adolescent in danger of future negative outcomes. And that's those things that I was saying before, you know, living in poverty. Um, it's perhaps a single uh, parent home being affiliated with gangs, not having good health care, you know, never having a chance to go to a dentist. So we just different, all these different things can be uh, drug use in the home, a parent who's an alcoholic. They all can put a child at risk. And, uh, you know, favorable, you've got favorable demographics and, and negative demographics, you know, groups that, that fit these sometimes more than others. Um, you want positive family, school and social interaction and, and not negative. You know, you want them to have numerous, uh, no, let me, let me get my mind right here. You want them to have limited psychosocial and environmental stressors, things that are stressing them out. You know, you want those things to be limited. You don't want them to, have to worry about, uh, you know, some kids in a single parent home, you've got a brother or sister that turn into kind of the caregiver at times, you know, the older ones. So they're worried about how they're going to provide for and take care of their younger siblings. That's something that's an issue. So the least amount of environmental stress to be there as possible. So the prevalence of at-risk youth in the year 2000, there were 71.7 .7 million. And this number will change. You know, it's not the same now as it was then, but it's not uh, enough oh, to change they all heard, talking about. They all, um, I heard a call in on here. Somebody here needs to mute. I'm not sure who's got some sound coming through, but somebody does. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was, that was nice. I heard myself like five times. Hope that doesn't happen. Um, anyway, out anyway, of this, was... all right, let me check. I'm going to have to, I'm just going to mute everybody. Okay. That should have done it. Should have done it. Should have done it. Should have done it. I know. Yeah, I can't talk with the. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. You're going in and out. Yeah, somebody's. Yeah, somebody. Um, you can hear me talking through somebody else's computer, is what's going on, I believe. I believe. Okay, looks like. Okay. Everybody log out and come right back. How about that? Let's try this again. I'm just going to end it and just click the same link and come back. <laughs>